All right, today let's talk about XLR connectors and whether we should be connecting that fourth conductor, the metal tab that goes to the XLR shell. And almost all XLR connectors have it. They've got pins one, two, and three, and then something that goes to the housing. Should we use it? Should we not use it? What are the issues? Will it make things better or worse? Well, let's give it a listen. I've got two cables here, the same length, same cable type. This one's got pin one grounded to the shell. This one does not. The answer may seem simple, but then there's a twist. So we'll check it out. So first of all, let's go ahead and I've got a lot of gain here. I got 45 dB of gain on this wing, which is the most that it'll do, and 18 dB of trim. So that's 63 dB of gain. That's a lot more than we're normally going to use. And let's try this open-ended. This is open-ended means the cable's just sitting there unterminated. Now we don't want to do this because an unterminated cable acts like an antenna and it's very high impedance. Our gain circuit becomes very noisy and we should hear that all kinds of hiss. And hum. When I touch the connector, the metal shell is not grounded. And so this is not protecting those very high gain wires on the inside. Let's go to this one that's grounded. Look at that, much quieter. Very cool, seems like that's the answer. Let's ground all the shells. We'll go farther into this rabbit hole. Next thing, what I'm going to do is terminate it. I'm gonna put a termination in. This has got a 150 ohm resistor wedged between or soldered between pins two and three, simulating what a mic would do, the coil, the impedance or resistance of the diaphragm. And that should get rid of all this noise. So let's go ahead and try that and I'll do it while it's hot. Listen to that. Now we've got a much, much lower. I can Barely hear a little hum there from the shell. All of a sudden the shell becomes not an issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that on the other one. Same thing. So terminated, it doesn't make that much of a difference. At 63 dB again, there's almost no difference. I can almost hear a little connection there. What does a mic actually do? A mic actually does more than that. A mic not only has whatever its impedance is, 150, 200 ohm, 250 ohms across pin two and three, which stops that noise and brings everything into play. But also microphones have a connection between pin one and the housing, this metal housing. It needs to ground the housing. All microphones ground the housing or else they would hum or buzz or make lots of noise. And so here's a connector from inside of a microphone and you can see these little wings here and these little wings scratch up on the inside of the metal shell and there's a, a soldered wire between pin one and these and the housing there that attaches these wings such that this connector makes sure the shell is grounded and if you open microphones you always find some way they've grounded that shell otherwise it's going to be noisy so let's go ahead and simulate what a mic does so we'll plug this into here. And what a mic does is not only does it put the 150 ohms or 200 ohms across pin two and three, but it also grounds the housing, which we'll do here. And now we have silence. Now it's no longer active. And we can try that on the other one. And same result. Microphone cable and microphone, we've got the same output. As soon as the mic is plugged in, the noise is gone, everything's fine. Based on that, as long as you don't leave your cables unterminated, it's the same. It doesn't matter if we ground the shell or not. But what happens if we add a cable extension? Let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to terminate the end of this extension and we will plug it into A little hot and the extension's out of here. Now let's add that terminated extension to the other one. 
we have no liveness, no, no influx of noise from the extension. And we have a tiny bit at the end here. So that seems like we should just ground all the shells. I mean, it would be slightly better. We have eliminated that issue. Let's try this unterminated. And we'll try that unterminated on the Again, it's less sensitive at this extension because with this shell not connected, when you put an extension on, both of those shells connect together, but they're not connected to anything. They're just a floating, unshielded tube a, surrounding some wires that are unprotected. So you're leaving wires unprotected from the environment there. Environment mainly being me touching it. So based on that second scenario, why would we not just ground all of the shells to pin one. Well, it turns out in equipment, there's two different grounds that they're dealing with. You're dealing with the chassis ground, which typically is connected to the AC wall outlet ground, which goes to the building power. And you've also got audio ground. And those two do connect together in some way at some point in the system. But once they've been connected together, Connecting them together a second time will create a ground loop. And a ground loop is where you've got current flowing through the audio ground. And if that current is something besides DC, whatever frequency that is will be infused in flux. It will be induced onto the signal wires. And that's that hum you hear when you're plugging in systems and you need, you have a ground loop problem. So keeping the audio ground and the chassis ground separate, or at least having the ability to keep them separate, is an important thing. Let's take a look at these two cables, one grounded to the shell and one of them with pin one not grounded to the shell, and see what happens with a DI box. Now DI boxes have ground lifts on them. A lot of times we're using the DI box because we need that ground lift switch. We need to be able to break the audio ground. This is the cable that does not have pin one connected to the shell. There's our noise. It's unterminated. It's going to be noisy. I'm going to bring the gain down for this. And if we hit ground lift, we get lots of hum because it's gone audio lifted and there's no termination. What happens if we do that with the cable that has pin one grounded to the shell. The ground lift is not lifting the ground anymore. We don't hear a hum. What's going on here? Let's check it out. I'm going to unplug these two cables from the mixing board and I'm going to plug the first one into the DI box. So I open up the shell of the connector and I'm going to connect the meter to pin one on this side and we're going to measure to the chassis ground of the DI. And here we have continuity. We can see that we have zero. When I hit the ground lift, it goes to overload. It disconnects the ground as it's supposed to. Let's do the same thing with the cable where we have connected pin one to the chassis. So pull out this connector here, put the DI box on, ground it. And you can see the connection there. We'll, we'll measure to the housing. And we have continuity. Now hit the ground lift and we still have continuity. So what's happening is inside the DI box, it's lifting the audio ground, but in the connector here, it's connecting the audio ground back to the chassis ground. And this isn't lifting the chassis ground because that's attached to the shell. So what happens is if we ground these shields to the shells, we lose the ability to audio lift. Now this has bitten me. This has been a troubleshooting conundrum. I was working for Chili Peppers many years ago and plugging the XLR into the back of the base rig instead of using a DI box for whatever reason at that point in time, it was, even with the audio lift, it wasn't working, but it had worked in the past. It turns out that the mic cable that we were using from whatever gig we were doing had these things shorted together. Okay, 
So scenario number one, we should ground the shells because it makes our ends less lively and hum susceptible. And it allows our cables to be extended without the extensions being quite as hot, very slightly lower noise. But with a DI box, we lose the ability to ground lift and it's not just DI boxes. Here's an analog gear, here's a DBX160A. And on the back of this 160A is an XLR ground lift button. Well, that's gonna have the same exact result that we have with the DI box. This lift button will no longer work. We lose the ability to isolate the chassis ground from the audio ground if we short the chassis ground to the audio ground in all of our connectors. All right, so we don't want to connect these things, right? Why would we do it if it's going to cause problems? Or we need two sets of cables, all the cables we use for everything normally, and then special cables that have the shell shorted for extensions. Or we could theoretically short them all on the female, but not on the male. There's another scenario as well. What if you're in the field recording nature using lots of long cables and lots of extensions. Microphones naturally short the shell to the ground. Leaving those shells unshielded or unterminated, not shorting it, will create this little amount of riz. And looking for the lowest noise floor possible is one of the goals of that type of recording. There you want those shells grounded. Same thing with like movies and you know, you're out there with the Nagra and you've got battery operated everything and you don't have to worry about chassis ground being isolated. What you really care about is a quality shield all the way through. So in those applications, shorting the shield to pin one on all your cables would be helpful. For us in the field doing shows, losing the ability for our DIs to ground lift and our audio gear to ground lift and also the fact that it doesn't really make much of a difference unless you're extending cables means we shouldn't short them, leave them open, and avoid extending mic cables. Use the right cable length if possible. If you do extend a cable, maybe you will run into that issue, but let's see how loud that really is. Is it really a problem? So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back together really quick, or not so quick. Come on. How big of an issue is it? Let's plug a mic in and see. Plug that in and... And that's at 45 dB without the trim at 18. If I turn it up too much hotter, it's gonna feed back in my headphones. So that's the level that I was running it. Let's go ahead and do the other one. And here's the other one. And we can hear that it's quite hot. Now let's go ahead and do it with an extension on both of these. So here's an extension on the first cable. Extension's cold now, it doesn't have a... All right. So there you have it. There is a very slight amount of buzz and hum added when you extend cables that don't have the shells grounded. But for almost everything else, there's no good reason to ground the shells unless you're doing field recording or you're relying on extensions and you're running high gain in which case you want them grounded. And that's why we do not ground those shells 
Rat Sound and the rental company because it causes more problems than it solves and we avoid using extensions whenever possible. Cool, cool.